Good morning and welcome. Our opening hymn is hymn number 333, All Our Hope on God is Founded. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. As we gather here this morning on this YouTube channel to worship Almighty God as St. Mary's Church here in Aylesbury, I welcome you. As you can see, we are still broadcasting here as well as meeting in limited numbers in the church. We want to continue to reach out to you who are unable or not yet ready to join that small number of people in the church. Let us worship the Lord. The Lord be with you. And let us pray. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you, and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen.
Let us pray. Generous God, you give us gifts and make them grow. Though our faith is small as a mustard seed, make it grow to your glory and the flourishing of your kingdom. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Please be seated for the proclamation of God's word. Then Laban said to Jacob, Because you are my kinsman, should you therefore serve me for nothing? Tell me, what shall your wages be? Now Laban had two daughters. The name of the elder was Leah, and the name of the younger was Rachel. Leah's eyes were lovely, and Rachel was graceful and beautiful. Jacob loved Rachel. So he said, I will serve you seven years for your younger daughter Rachel. Laban said, It is better that I give her to you than that I should give her to any other man. Stay with me. So Jacob served seven years for Rachel, and they seemed to him but a few days because of the love he had for her. Then Jacob said to Laban, Give me my wife that I may go into her, for my time is completed. So Laban gathered together all the people of the place and made a feast. But in the evening he took his daughter Leah and brought her to Jacob and he went in to her. Laban gave his maid Zilpah to his daughter Leah to be her maid. When morning came, it was Leah, and Jacob said to Laban, What is this you have done to me? Did I not serve with you for Rachel? Why then have you deceived me? Laban said, This is not done in our country, giving the younger before the firstborn. Complete the week of this one, and we will give you the other also in return for serving me for another seven years. Jacob did so, and completed his week. Then Laban gave him his daughter Rachel as a wife. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Make no
Reading is taken from Romans chapter 8, verses 26 to 39. In the same way, the Spirit helps us in our weakness. We do not know what we ought to pray for, but the Spirit himself intercedes us through wordless groans. And we who search our hearts know the mind of the Spirit, because the Spirit intercedes for God's people in accordance with the will of God. And we know that in all things God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. For those God foreknow, he also predestines to be conformed into the image of the Son, that he might be the firstborn among brothers and sisters. And those he predestined, he also called. Those he called, he also justifies. Those he justifies, he also glorified. What, then, shall we say in response to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? Who, would, who did he not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all? How will he not also among him graciously give us all things? Who will bring any charge against those whom God has chosen? It is God who justifies. Who then is the one who condemns? No one. Christ Jesus, who died more than that, who was raised to life, is at the right hand of God and is also interceding for us. Who shall separate us from the love of Jesus Christ? Shall trouble or hardship or persecution or famine or nakedness or danger or the sort? As it is written, for your sake we face death all day long. We are considered a sheep to be slaughtered. No, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor powers, neither height nor depth, nor anything in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God, that is Jesus Christ our Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand for the reading of the Gospel. The Lord be with you. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Jesus put before the crowd another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed that someone took and sowed in his field. It is the smallest of all the seeds but when it is grown, it is the greatest of shrubs and becomes a tree, so that the birds of the air come and make their nests in its branches. He told them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like yeast that a woman took and mixed in three measures of flour until it was all 
leavened. The kingdom of heaven is like a treasure hidden in a field, which someone found and hid, then in his great joy goes and sells all that he has and buys that field. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant in search of fine pearls. On finding one pearl of great value, he went and sold all that he had and bought it. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a net that was thrown into the sea and caught fish of every kind. When it was full, they drew it ashore, sat down, and put the good into baskets, but threw out the bad. So it will be at the end of the age. The angels will come out and separate the evil from the righteous and throw them into the furnace of fire, where there will be gnashing of teeth and weeping. Have you understood this? They answered, Yes. And he said to them, Therefore, every scribe who has been trained for the kingdom of heaven is like the master of a household who brings out of his treasure what is new and what is old. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. I'm now pleased to welcome Mr. John Bush, our preacher for the day. Please be seated. May the words of my lips and the thoughts of all our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. At last it has been admitted, speed cameras are there to make money. In the Metro newspaper article on Thursday the 16th of July, it stated that according to a police watchdog, speed cameras are being used to make money rather than prevent accidents, with some locations actually chosen because they are good hunting grounds for fines. It continued, a wide-ranging review of roads policing released on Wednesday, found that drug drivers were tolerated and the use of breathalyzer tests had slumped, yet the number of fixed penalty tickets issued for excessive speed had risen sharply in recent years. The report said sites where speed cameras were placed suggest that some are being used as cash cows rather than as tools to prevent crashes as several are located on roads without a history of collisions or other vulnerabilities. But for all the moans and groans voiced by disgruntled, mo disgruntled motorists over the many speed cameras now apparent in the UK, there is a certain satisfaction when habitual speeders are caught and fined. There's even more satisfaction when these speeders, who seem to think they are beyond the law, clock up so many points on their licence that they're prevented from driving for a certain period of time. It feels like justice is being done at last and that our roads are safer for it. Justice is a major concern for most human beings. We don't like to see injustices and the world only comes back into some sort of balance when justice is satisfied. So, after a crime, when the criminal is given a light sentence, the victim's family are often incensed because they feel that the punishment in no way matches the crime. Many of us human beings especially like to see the mighty fallen. When someone who has enjoyed an exotic or wealthy lifestyle and who is caught in some form of criminal activity, such as tax evasion, we mostly like to see them handed a substantial prison sentence. It feels very unfair when we who pay our dues and struggle to manage while those who are, avoid paying anything enjoy everything we might like but can't possibly afford. 
After Jacob's shenanigans with his twin brother Esau, cheating Esau out of his rightful inheritance and deceiving their old father Isaac, it seems like justice was done when Jacob himself was cheated by his uncle Laban. Jacob had fled to his unknown uncle, his father Isaac's relative. Much to his parents' consternation, Esau, the elder twin by a minute or two, had already married two Hittite women. Isaac and Rebekah didn't want Jacob too, marrying a Canaanite woman. They wanted the tribal bloodline to remain pure. Fortuitously, Jacob was terrified of Esau, who was out to kill him, in revenge for Jacob's underhand plot. So he was very receptive of the idea of a long journey to the far land of Mesopotamia to find a suitable wife. He fell in love with Rachel at first sight. Although the elder sister Leah had lovely eyes, Rachel was gorgeous in every respect, being both graceful and beautiful. Jacob was enchanted by her, and it seems that the feeling was mutual. Jacob approached Rachel's father Laban and asked for her hand in marriage, offering to work for Laban for seven years. Laban readily agreed but on the wedding night, seven years later, pulled a fast one in an almost identical manner to the way in which Jacob had deceived his father Isaac seven years earlier. Under cover of darkness and swathed in veils, Laban's elder sister Leah was sent in to Jacob. Jacob made love to her on his wedding night, apparently believing he was making love to Rachel. In the morning, the awful truth dawned. He had been cheated into marrying the wrong daughter. Whilst feeling a grain of sympathy for Jacob, there is also a sense of some comeuppance. Justice has been done. Jacob cheated Esau by deception. Now, Jacob himself has been cheated by deception. But there is a pattern throughout the book of Genesis which doesn't vary. After sin comes justice, but after justice comes God's grace, that is, the unmerited and undeserved favour of God. Nobody is left to struggle on with the consequences of their sin, for God always put things right through his grace. After Adam and Eve sinned, they weren't executed by God, but were expelled from the Garden of Eden. And before they went, God himself made clothes for them to wear. After Cain killed his brother Abel, he too was expelled from society and left to wander. But God put his mark on Cain to protect him. Later, when God saw the evil wrought by human beings, he was minded to blot them from the earth. But he saved Noah and his family so that human beings could regenerate. And here, after Jacob's sin, God restores the balance of justice, but then pours his grace upon Jacob. Jacob married Rachel a week later, after promising to work a further seven years for Laban, and eventually produced sons by both sisters, sons who were to become the founding fathers of the twelve tribes of Israel. Throughout the Old Testament, we are given examples of God's justice, being followed by forgiveness and grace. When God forgives, he forgives fully. Previous sins are never held against the sinner, but love and blessings are poured in upon into them, just as if they had always been 
perfect people. Perhaps for us as Christians, a strong sense of justice needs to be tempered by love. Perhaps we too need to learn how to forgive so fully that it is as if the sin never happened. Perhaps we too need to forget sin against us to such an extent that we too are able to pour our love into the ex-sinner. But all too often the human cry is for vengeance and the feeling by those sinned against is that punishments are never severe enough. Perhaps as Christians we need to take forgiveness seriously and first completely and fully forgive. Will you now stand as we proclaim together our faith in God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets, we believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please be seated as we offer our intercessions and thanksgivings unto Almighty God. Almighty God, as a church, we daily pray that your kingdom will come, but most of the time we so often live in ways that prevent its coming. We spend too much of our time trying to build our own human kingdom, putting ourselves rather than you, the centre of our lives. Send your spirit to remind us that you are first, others are second, and we are third. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Holy God, we pray for your church, especially for our church here in Aylesbury. We pray for Father Doug as he takes a few days off. We pray for Father Rob, who's filling in for him. We pray for Raina, our church wardens, all those who serve on our church councils. Thank you too for those who provide music, Kenton, the choir, those who do the flowers, who assist, serve, read and pray. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Creator God, we thank you for the example of leadership given to us by your Son, Jesus Christ, in his life on earth. We pray for the renewal of a spirit of humility and a sense of responsibility among the leaders of this world, that the hungry might be fed, the oppressed might be free to live in peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father God, we worship you as the one who's given us life and we ask that you will help us to live it to the full. At home, may we be the friends and neighbours we really want to be. Help us to spread the warmth of your love to everyone we meet. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. 
Mighty God, we thank you for your love and compassion for all who suffer in body, mind and spirit. We pray that your healing presence will calm their fears, ease their pain and bring light into the darkness of all who are sick. We ask you be with us and all who need your loving touch as we continue to live beneath the shadow of the COVID-19 pandemic. We pray especially at this time for Dan, Marion, Rebecca, Lorraine, Mark and Gwyn and Kim. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Merciful God, through the ministry of your Son, Jesus Christ, you freed us from the grip of the tomb. We pray for those who have departed this life and ask through your loving kindness to have mercy on their souls. We pray for two those bereaved by their passing, especially those of us bereaved during this pandemic who have not been able to celebrate the lives of their loved ones. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Gracious God, hear these prayers we offer you in his name. By the power of your Holy Spirit, work within us and among us to bring about your kingdom into this world. Let your will be done so that all people may live only for your praise and glory. Merciful Father, I accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. God so loved the world that he gave his only Son to save us from our sins, to be our advocate in heaven, and to bring us to eternal life. Let us confess our sins in penitence and faith, firmly resolved to keep God's commandments and to live in love and peace with all. Together we pray. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbor in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. As we are dispersed still across living rooms and studies and stairwells, um, let us share in the peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Please share words of peace in the chat, in your hearts, and in this world.
The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right. It is our duty and our joy at all times and in all places to give you thanks and praise, Holy Father, Heavenly King, Almighty and Eternal God, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, for he is your living word. Through him you have created all things from the beginning and formed us in your own image. Through him you have freed us from the slavery of sin, giving him to be born of a woman and to die upon the cross. You raised him from the dead and exalted him to your right hand on high. Through him you have sent upon us your holy and life-giving spirit and made us a people for your own possession. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name forever praising you and singing. Accept our praises, Heavenly Father, through your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And as we follow his example and obey his command, grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit these gifts of bread and wine may be to us his body and his blood, who in the same night that he was betrayed took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to them, saying, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Therefore, Heavenly Father, we remember his offering of himself made once for all upon the cross. We proclaim his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension. We look for the coming of your kingdom, and with this bread and this cup, we make the memorial of Christ, your Son, our Lord. Great is the mystery of faith. Accept through him, our great high priest, this our sacrifice of thanks and praise. And as we eat and drink these holy gifts in the presence of your divine majesty, 
renew us by your Spirit, inspire us with your love, and unite us in the body of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Through him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all, with all who stand before you in earth and heaven, we worship you, Father Almighty, in songs of everlasting praise. In confidence, let us pray to the Father for the coming of his kingdom amongst us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one because we all share in one bread. Draw near with faith. Receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which he gave for you, and his blood, which he shed for you. Eat and drink in remembrance that Christ died for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. I invite all who are faithfully baptized, all who have gathered today, to receive spiritually, the Holy Sacrament, to make your act with me the act of spiritual communion. I invite you to pray. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, Come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, given for you. The blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, shed for you.
Please be seated for our choir anthem.
Let us pray. Lord God, whose Son is the true vine and the source of life, ever giving himself that the world may live, may we so receive within ourselves the power of his death and passion, that in his saving cup we may share his glory and be made perfect in his love. For he is alive and reigns now and forever. Amen. We now pray together. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. As you can see, our notices, uh, we are still running our church at home for everyone who is unable or not yet ready to come back into the church. Uh, as I said earlier, we are limited to a small number of people with the coronavirus protocols and restrictions being observed uh, in the church building. Uh, but if you would like to attend one of these services on Sunday morning, in the flesh, um, and you're not currently receiving invitations from the St. Mary's database, that is a different system than the normal weekly emails. Um, please contact the office. Uh, the email is now being shown here, administrator at ellsburystmary.org.uk. And also please remember that we are open Monday through Friday from 9.30 until noon for private prayer that you might come into the church building and be at peace in a place that is quiet and cool and welcoming. And now, the peace of God, which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. Our post-communion hymn is number 484. The church's one foundation is Jesus Christ, her Lord. I will be away on a small holiday this week. I look forward to seeing you again next Sunday. God bless. The church is one.